Well, good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, what, whatever time it is that you've been able to check in with Chapel Hill's Devotion Time. I'm Kathy Hurd, and I'm just checking in with you all today to share some of the emotions and, and different kinds of feelings that, that I've been experiencing during this time of the coronavirus pandemic. Um, this week, as we're videotaping, we are into our seventh week of, of quarantine, shelter in place, healthy at home, social distancing, non-traditional instruction, whatever it is that they're talking about and they're calling it, that's where we are and we've had a lot of time for, for uh, self-reflection for sure. But maybe you're like me and some of these days have been tougher than others and that's what I want to talk about. But before we do that, let's go to the, to the Lord in prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, wow, as, as your children of faith, we are looking to you for peace and guidance, perhaps n as never before in our lives. This, this COVID-19 is certainly no surprise to you. And we take comfort in our belief that it is you that is in control, not the doctors or the politicians or the heads of states of, of countries far away. We, we know that your time is always perfect and, it, and your plan, and it's all for our good. As we have every day, today we reach out for your blessings and continue to seek your grace. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Okay, well let me take you back a couple weeks ago to Easter Sunday. And I can honestly tell you that when Pastor Mike first started talking about the possibility of us meeting together in the parking lot, um, I could not wait to get here. Um, even if it meant staying put in the car with the windows rolled up, I was all in. Well, so it was probably about a two-week period where I checked the weather forecast every day and sometimes multiple times. And as it got closer to April 12th, the forecast kept getting darker and darker. Um, and it wasn't just gonna rain, and it was, it was gonna be storming, like 90% chance of a really bad storm. Well, I really wasn't too concerned because I figured that God being in control, he was gonna handle it one, one way or the other. And if it came to a pouring down rain, I was going to sit out in the parking lot anyway, so there. Well, Sunday finally came with a light rain, and my husband and I and our daughter Mandy sat in our car with the windows rolled up, and other people began to fill up the parking lot with their windows rolled up. And the rain moved away. And while it was impossible to see everybody, we could, we could wave to Denny Harrell on our left, and Robin Trimble was right next to us, and next to her was Angie Pollan. And Keith and, and Leslie and Rob started singing the, the praise and worship and the hallelujahs of Easter, and, and of course Stephanie and Krista were scurrying all over the place, and Krista, by the way, where was your mask? Um, then, uh, Taylor Tompkins was walking around through the parking lot. Taylor, I would know those smiling eyes anywhere, reminding us to keep the windows rolled up, even though it was getting to be like a sauna in there. So, Cooksey came out and he, he led us in prayer and he read this, this uh, scripture references for the, for the morning and then Pastor Mike came out and gave the message, our Easter message, probably like, unlike anyone that we'd ever heard before. This most glorious celebration of our Christian faith was held in the midst of isolation. And you know, outwardly, it kind of seemed to pale in comparison to the Easter's of the past. There were no Easter bonnets, uh, no polished shoes, uh, no new clothes, you know, they, we didn't have to get out of the car, so, you know, I didn't even dye Easter eggs this year for the first time that I can't remember not doing it. 
especially when I was in charge. But through Pastor Mike's words came the realization that the impact of the first Easter was being felt right there in the parking lot. Jesus resurrected was our savior for all of us in our cars in that parking lot with our windows rolled up. We were reminded that the connection that we've longed for and taken for granted really is coming to the realization that we are frustrated and separated and we can't do anything about it right now. But Pastor Mike pointed out that we may be awakening to a reconnection with each other. And we were in agreement with our honking amens. We, the body of Christ, Chapel Hill, were back together. And then we weren't. It was time to go home, and I did not want to leave. And as I watched the cars and waited my turn, and that they were exiting with my friends and the Chapel Hill family. They were heading home still with their windows rolled up and I felt this sad, sad feeling of loss. And it continued pr pretty much throughout the day. And then I started remembering what church is to me and it's never been a building. It was wherever two or more are gathered. But the reason that faith communities exist is to overcome this feeling of vulnerability and isolation and loneliness and separation. The church is reaching out to support each other in faith. And together we are to spread the good news of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. I realized then that going to church was not something that I should do, wasn't even something that I merely wanted to do or liked to do. Being with the church was something that I needed. I needed the community of church. Well then there's this. Pastor Mike brought up the disturbing statistic that 62 percent of Henderson County residents are unchurched. Now, Chapel Hill has all kinds of outreach programs specifically designed to, to reach out to those people and those programs are being severely compromised by this pandemic. The things that we use to minister to unchurched people have been postponed. You know, Jesus said, and, and, and you'll find this in Matthew uh, 28, 19 and 20. It's the very last part of Matthew's book. He met with his, uh, his apostles um, after his resurrection in Galilee. And he said this, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to, be, to obey everything that I have commanded of you. It wasn't just to the apostles that he was saying that. He was also saying that to, to you and to me. So how, how can we do that if we can't go anywhere? We can't even gather together, the Chapel Hill family. We can't go, and we can't make disciples, and we can't baptize, and we can't teach them to obey when we're isolated from our church friends, and particularly from the unchurched. We can't. Or can we? You know, the Bible tells us of someone who did just that. The Apostle Paul wrote what is referred to as the prison epistles while he was under house arrest in Rome for two years. These letters were, were written to encourage the local churches that he had a personal connection with. The Ephesians, the Philippians, the Colossians, and the church at Philemon 
he wrote to them. And in the book of Philemon, he wrote that a Christian's place in the kingdom of God is not determined by their physical circumstances. Well, while in prison, Paul still ministered to those to whom he was called. His letters are just as instructional and encouraging and impactful to us today. All that Paul had at his disposal to reach out to those people that needed him were his letters and fellow Christians like Timothy and Luke to help spread his message. I'm so encouraged by that. In 60 AD, Paul re reached out to those people and to others through social media. Okay, there's all kinds of things that are wrong with the internet and social media today, but through that technology, we have numerous ways to gather together and reach out to those that do not have a home church. We can reach out to our friends here, our Chapel Hill family, through this time of quarantine, through social media. We can call them or text them just to say hi and catch up and see if there's anything that we can pray for them for. And especially reaching out to those that live alone. We're all shut-ins now. Well, have you seen any, uh, any uh, recordings or articles about drive-bys for birthdays and special occasions where people just you know they're, they're they're notified ahead of time and and they meet at a certain spa place and the celebrant is right there and you drive by and you wave and you can even have your window down if you're you know six feet apart but they know that you've been thinking about them we were we were able to participate in one of those and it was joyous it was so so good and we can do that chapel hill because we can honk and did you know that you can post things on the Chapel Hill website, like, like your prayer concerns or uh, a, a notice of, of something else that you want to share, like maybe a, a, a program that's coming on TV or a, a movie that you've, you've been able to, to see on, on one, of, one of your apps on your TV. You can share written devotions. You can share books that have touched or encouraged you. And here at Chapel Hill, right now, media is loaded with mus movies and Bible studies and commentaries. And you can help people get connected. And you know, we can even be like Paul. We can mail cards and letters and snail mail. Now, I'm going to have to make a disclaimer after saying all of that because those of you with older tech challenged parents or friends a tutorial or two or three may be necessary and possibly a few downloads and then some more tutorials you know this might even be the time that you bring them up into this century and buy them an iPad and show them how to use it. Well, that's us. Well, what about our friends who don't do organized religion? Again, Facebook is an excellent tool to invite them to our YouTube services and our devotionals that we're sharing. And you can share your thoughts, favorite scriptures, and inspirational memes on your Facebook page. You know, many of us kind of hesitate to speak face to face to our friends about our Christianity. Well here you can share your source of hope and peace, the peace that you have through Jesus Christ and Him crucified. You guys, no one can predict when this time of uncertainty is going to end. Maybe next week, maybe next month, Hopefully not two years from now, like Paul had to suffer through. But it's not going to be too soon for any of us. And things are not going to be the same. 
and I'm not I'm not really too concerned about that because a lot of things needed to be changed. Um, God's plan is always for our good and God's timing is perfect. It's rarely early but it's never late. It's going to take patience and it's going to take faith but in the meantime God is going to provide us with the means to reach out to each other and, and to others that are not part of our community and besides that he has sent his spirit to be with us constantly through all this and to 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 lead us to the hearts that need it you know Jesus commissioned us to go and to make disciples and to baptize and to to preach and teach the the other people to obey the things that he commanded us to do. And then again, after his resurrection, he made it even easier when he was talking to Peter and all he had to say was, feed my sheep. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for this time of isolation because in it we have narrowed down our vision. We have come to rely on fewer things that we thought were necessary and we have come to see that you are at the top of our needs. You are who we seek. Pastor Mike talked about us running towards you when we finally can come back together as a community and and we just long for that day we we thank you for the time that we had together here in this parking lot with our windows rolled up and we know that we will be able to do this again and we can be face to face in your company here at Chapel Hill so we just ask you during this time to just continue to make us aware that you are in charge and you care and you understand our fears and our frustrations and our uncertainty. And we know that you are here to provide everything we need. We just thank you for your Holy Spirit. And we thank you for the leadership of our church and, and Pastor Mike, who is here for such a time as this. We just continue to lift you up, and we lift up each other, and we lift up the city of Henderson and our, our leaders and the United States and the world, because for the first time that I can remember, we are suffering together. So we just put all of this in your hands and we trust. And we'll, we know we're going to have bad days. But we also know that we're going to get through this with you. And I just pray all of these things in your son Jesus' name. Because he told me that we could. Amen. Chapel Hill, I look forward to the day where we can be together. I don't know if we're going to hug. Not supposed to shake hands. But I look forward to seeing you again. Have a good one.